Grace and peace to you. This is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Today we begin looking at the 28th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at the first verse. Paul and all the companions that he has, all of the passengers, all of the uh, sailors, and the centurion who leads them are shipwrecked. And now we see that story unfold. God's hand of abundance is once again revealed. After we had reached safety, we then learned that the island was called Malta. Well, that island is still around today. The local people showed us unusual kindness. Angels of the Lord, maybe? Since, since it had begun to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire. Paul gathers up some fire, and then a miraculous thing happens. Uh, as he's gathering up the fire, a viper bites him, attaches itself to his hand, and everybody figures that Paul is going to die. That'd be kind of a weird ending to this whole story, wouldn't it? But Paul just shakes it off, and then they wait for him to drop dead or to get really sick and swell up. That's what happens when a poisonous snake bites you. But none of it happened. Paul is still protected. He still has a job to do to appear before the emperor. Now, this is one of the places in Scripture where folks get the idea that we should handle snakes, let them bite us so that God can save us. That's really kind of a perversion of what's going on here. This is a, sto a story that's told to make us understand that God is with us when we have a mission. Not that God does just weird stuff in order to amaze us. It's not entertainment. It's the proclamation of the ascended Jesus in the power of the Spirit. Then we're told in verse 7, in that vicinity... There were lands belonging to a leading man of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for days, three days. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick in bed with a fever and dysentery, so Paul visited him, and he cured him by praying and putting his hands on him. The story of the healing ministry of Jesus continues, and it continues through Paul, who does this in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Spirit, not of his own power. Now the rest of the people on the island with diseases came and were cured, and so they tried to bestow honors on us. And when we were about to sail, they put on board all the provisions we needed. In the gratitude and thanksgiving for what God had done through Paul, they were taken care of. Now, three months later, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island. Winter has gone, sailing season is back, and three months of living here on Malta, they finally get on an Alexandrian ship with the twin brothers as its figurehead. They describe the ship for some reason. Apparently, the figurehead on the prow of the ship has two brothers on it. I don't know if there's any symbolism here or not. I can't find any. Maybe it's just a good description. So they put in at Syracuse, and then it tells them they go along the way, and then finally in verse 14, we're told that in Puteoli, they found brothers and sisters and were invited to stay with them for seven days. Here, all the way from home, through all of these travels, they found brothers and sisters, people of the way, followers of Jesus. Not only is Paul manifesting the power of the Spirit of the ascended Jesus, but he's running into it as he goes around the world. That's what we hope happens here in our church, that people who are traveling through life, who've been shipwrecked and seen disaster, who come stumbling into our church, will find brothers and sisters here on their journey. And then it says we came to Rome. Finally, they're where Paul is supposed to be. The brothers and sisters from there, when they heard of us, came as far from as far away as the Forum of Appius and three taverns, two places in and around Rome, to meet us. Paul thanked God for them. 
and he took courage. Verse 16 says, when we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. In other words, uh, another comfortable setting is given for him. Paul will now live at Rome until he has his meeting with the emperor. At that point, his fate will be decided. Much of the letters that are written by Paul come from prison. For instance, Philippians, Colossians, perhaps. And it's there, especially Philippians, that Paul talks about his time in prison. Paul has been provided for, along with all the people with him. Paul has shown the power of the Spirit by not being killed by a snake and by raising up the dead and the sick and the lame. The power of Jesus continues wherever they travel. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks that you're everywhere. We give you thanks especially that you're everywhere through the brothers and sisters we meet who are part of the way. We ask, Lord, that you would remind us how you sustain us and protect us in time of trial. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.